up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Now I keep saying I'm gonna hang that mirror up there and then I walk by it every single day and well, screw it, let's hang that mirror. You wanna know the fun part of hanging a mirror by yourself? Uh, nothing. There looks pretty good, eh, maybe a little bit higher. Eh, maybe a little bit lower. Eh, my girlfriend's kinda short. She's not really that short. All right, right there it is. And now the fun part of lining everything up. Now some of you may be saying, Rhino, you didn't use a level to hang that mirror? And here's a little tip for you guys if you don't already know. Levels aren't always the right answer, especially if you're running any type of horizontal lines. Now mind you, when I put up the shiplap, obviously I didn't use a level because I wanted that top seam right there with the crown molding to be completely parallel to each other. So if I were to put a level on it and that crown molding is pushed up tight against the ceiling and the ceiling's not level, which with these track homes is very common. But anyways, I didn't use a level to put up any of the shiplap. So when it comes time to hang this mirror, if I were to put a level on it and that shiplap's a little bit out of level, you're gonna see the difference between the two. So instead, measure off one of your vertical lines. That way your eye is gonna see that everything looks nice and perfect and level. And at the end of the day, I mean, unless you're building like some type of welding jig or something like that, when it comes to stuff like this, your eye is more important than what a level will say. So today we are going into the belly of the beast. We are going to the absolute busiest part of town on a normal day, but we're going there during rush hour traffic and it is like the hub of Christmas shopping. As you can tell, the planning was really great on this one today. So in this video, I plan on answering a very, very commonly asked question. And it's kind of the reason we actually gotta go somewhere is because it really tackles that question. And that is, should you buy an already lifted truck? And today we're tackling from the dealer. Used is kind of a whole different ball game and we'll tackle that in a different video, but should you buy a truck that is already lifted from a dealer? And well, to do that, we gotta go to the dealer. Uh, we have arrived here and the reason I picked this dealership even though it is way out of the way is because I know they like to sell trucks that are already lifted in fact this is the only place I've ever seen back when Chevy did the big mistake of making the Reaper the only place I ever saw or the only dealership in town that I knew that actually fronted the money on a Chevy Reaper was this dealership so we are here at courtesy Chevrolet and it looks like they've got a couple of prime specimens up here we got a 2019 there and probably a 2018 over here both of which have different lift packages set up on them it's like they even got a lifted tahoe here but believe it or not i actually hate doing these types of videos i don't like going to dealerships when i'm not buying anything if it's a dealership that i don't know it's usually you get sales guys that want to try and sell you the vehicle and then really to get them to give you the type of day you got to act like you want to buy the vehicle and i don't like having to do that but here we are let's check out what we got going on lift kit wise on this so they're calling this the black widow package and as you guys can see in the interior in there might, might be a little tough but they actually have the headrests are all embroidered with the black widow package as well looks like it's got fender flares black widow wheels here we've got some sca performance uh, it looks like it's just a caliper cover got bfg altering tires can't exactly tell what lift kit we got here Whatever SCA lift kit is, I'm guessing this is like a factory packaged kind of offshoot brand uh, setup here with like a little private label. Looks like a very common lift kit setup down there. And then if we look at the MSRP of the truck, they're saying it is 53324 Now total vehicle, as it sits, they're calling for 74,534, which is basically saying there are $23,394 in options here. So let's take a second to actually break that down. Now, SCA is basically the kind of like, I don't want to give them as much credit as Roush, but they basically offer factory supplied options for vehicles. So some of the stuff is SCA exclusive, but we're going to do our best here. Now they don't really have their six inch lift kit listed on their website price wise, but if we gauge a regular six inch lift kit, we'll say about $2,000 plus $1,000 labor audited for you. Wheels and tires. Now their wheels run $1,500 for a set of four and the tires that are running on this truck are about $1,400. If we look at the fender flares, they offer this on their website as well for $795. The dual exhaust, they don't exactly list which one it is, but I'd say about 550 bucks is fair for a dual exhaust. Running boards, amp steps, 1400 bucks, that'll put you right in that price range. 
Black Widow logo with a headrest cover. I would say about 150 bucks. You can get headrest covers pre-imported for pretty cheap online. Painted interior trim. I don't know what that means without actually going in the vehicle, but I'd say 300 bucks is a safe range for there. Black Widow exterior logos as well. I'd say 150 bucks. Stainless steel gauges. 150 bucks might be a little bit cheap. Let's put it in that range. LED interior lighting. Also, don't know what that is. 150 bucks sounds good. SCA red brake caliper covers. They actually have these on their website listed. I think they're a little steep at 170, but that is what they cost. Front tinted windows, just to play it safe, 250 bucks. Hood vents. Now, believe it or not, $475 for hood vents. Yes, those two little plastic things you see there. Leather seat covers. It's hard to gauge. They're very basic, very plain. I don't really think they changed out much, but I will give them 1500 bucks. And then the high clearance front bumper they actually have on their website for $1,795 for a grand total of $12,335. Now, mind you, we left out some labor on a lot of these things, but as you can see, a $10,000 difference, I think we're all kind of in the ballpark of knowing there is not $10,000 of labor in this truck. And yes, I understand dealers have to make money as well, but all of these prices listed are MSRP. The dealer's obviously not paying that price and the MSRP and so the dealer wholesale cost when they sell to you at MSRP, they're already making their money. So the dealer's kind of trying to double down here on the money they're making. Now, I don't want to be that guy, but if we look at that truck and you're going to tell me there's $23,000 worth of options on it, does that mean yeah, I don't know what world that is. So over here on the 2019, that it's funny because they're MSRPing this one at 53 with cloth interior, bench seat, pro comp wheels and tires. It's got some type of, oh, yep, yep. It's got a pro comp. Oh, what is that? Like a four inch lift at max on this thing. All right, so the window sticker on this booger, they're saying this one with what we got here it's for a pro comp six inch lift kit pro comp 20 inch 34 series wheels pro comp 35 12 5 r20 tires spline lug nuts is ten thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars making the total price of this one fifty nine nine forty five so once again let's break this one down this one's easier to get prices on because well there's only really three or four things on here we've got the pro comp six inch suspension kit for eighteen hundred dollars and we'll factor in another thousand dollars of labor Pro Comp 20 inch 34 series wheels, those come into $840. Pro Comp 35, 12, 5 by 20 inch tires. These tires are actually surprisingly expensive for Pro Comp. $1,600, and then you gotta throw in the spline lug nuts for $75, bringing a total of $5,315. And I think it's safe to say the $1,000 of labor includes all of that. So, right there, you're seeing over $5,000 of markup as well. But let's check out this Tahoe that they have here. Now the Tahoe is running the same Black Widow package. They're asking 88358 And they are claiming there are almost $19,000 worth of upgrades onto this thing. Which, I mean, you know, take a step back. If you see $19,000 in options... I'm honestly really surprised we haven't had a salesman come out yet. I mean, I'm looking at some of their most high dollar trucks here. And not one has come out trying to make a sale? I'll take it, I'll take it. I must say though, I do like these 100 anniversary badges on the Chevys. They're clean, they're classy. You know, it wouldn't obviously fit on my style of truck, but if you're going to keep a truck stock, I actually do like them a lot. We've got another Black Widow edition over here. This one's got running boards. This one's got to be way more expensive. Let's see. We've got the Black Widow package with this one. MSRP is at $72,000. they are claiming there are $21,161 worth of accessories on this truck. So let's say you buy that truck stock and now obviously that's crew cab this one's got an extended cab but let's just pretend for right now that this truck is a stock crew cab what would it cost to build a six inch lifted truck to similar spec and would it be worth it so my thing is this SEA lift kit looks like it's kind of like a rebranded pro comp or something like a private label pro comp lift kit but you're not really getting any upgrade you're still getting rancho shocks they just got a giant weird coilover spacer in there to get your lift so really all you're doing like you're just gaining height that's it you're not getting a, a better quality ride you're not getting a shock upgrade you're not getting better tie rods but your upper control arms are still tiny and then this bumper I hate to say it but this is uh, 
not the greatest looking bumper in the world not horrible but they could have at least paint matched it instead of just going with like a textured black and then they should definitely offer an option with or without front sensors but i find it hard to believe that this truck doesn't have front sensors from the factory they just somehow didn't make it to the front of the bumper oh well, i take that back apparently they do order trucks without front sensors so i don't know a whole lot about this dealer i've never dealt with this dealer but there's a couple tricks that dealers tend to do but uh any of the dealers i've ever bought from or dealt with they don't order anything but really fully loaded trucks unless you special order anything or it's a work truck because they know options like sensors front and rear all that kind of stuff people are going to want it people are willing to pay for it when you get dealers that order a bunch of kind of stripped down trucks like I'm seeing around here, it really worries me as that they're gonna try and pull those off as like they're fully loaded trucks. Not, I mean, obviously on the paperwork or whatever, it's gonna say they're not, but they're trying to pass that truck over there with no front sensors off as like, well, I mean, we got this one over here. It's a little bit cheaper than that one. And it's the same thing to the, you know, unknowing buyer that comes in, which is kind of the same reason dealers will lift trucks. Obviously, this white 2019 over here, it's not a fully loaded truck. It's got a cloth interior. But by them throwing the lift and wheels and tires on it, it now is a much better looking truck. So they're hoping somebody comes in and can look past the fact that it has a cloth interior, but they're still gonna try and charge a premium for it because it's a lifted truck. Then here's one thing to keep in mind, and it's really hard to tell, and I know you're staring at a blank screen a lot, but it has the 18 inch tires all terrain listed in here for 150 bucks and the 51 140 MSRP. And if we look at the MSRP on this truck, it shows 51 140 on the build sheet right there plus the 21,000 in extras, AKA they didn't minus out that 150 for the factory tires that it showed up with. So those are just little things you gotta keep in mind. So now you're paying for two sets of wheels and tires, but you're only getting one. This white truck's even worse. They're showing you're paying $300 for 18 inch bright silver painted aluminum wheels for an MSRP of 48,950. Then up there, they're showing you 48,950 plus the 10,995 for a total of 59,945. AKA, they did not minus the wheels out also. Oh, looks like we found our first sales guy. Maybe we get him to buy my truck. And I hate to say it, GM, but... No. No. You guys missed the mark with this bad boy. I mean, I get we're trying to bring back the Walker Texas Ranger look, but it just is not a good look on these newer trucks. I will say, though, I actually don't mind the gloss black painted bumper with the gloss black infill on the Chevrolet logo on the back, as long as you keep everything below gloss black. Now, in all fairness to this dealership, they do have one giant, beautiful American flag that I get to see every time I'm on the freeway driving by. I do give them credit for that. It's still crazy to me that nobody has come out. I mean, there's literally nobody looking at any vehicles in this dealership right now. Nobody. But I've seen about six salesmen and not one wants to come try and sell me a truck. I don't know what happened. Long gone are the days of the salesmen really trying to put in the work and slaying some vehicles. Because I mean, you guys remember when I was trying to buy uh, a replacement truck for the Silverado. I went to many dealerships and nobody gave me the time of day. And I mean, I'm talking, I walked in there, even with the Silverado when I was trying to buy that, I walked in there ready to write a check to whoever could find me the truck that I wanted. And it would take me like a solid 20, 30 minutes each dealership to even get somebody to talk to me. But definitely don't take that as me complaining, guys, because well, the less people we have to deal with today, the better. I would like to ask a dealer about some of the options and see really what the sales guys know about any of the lift kits or any of that. Um, it's probably all that we think they know but you know, it would still be cool to ask. But that being said, I will say the one benefit to buying a truck that has already been lifted from a dealer is typically, I'm not gonna say always, but typically, especially if it's a brand new truck, whatever parts they have put on there is going to come with some sort of warranty. And regardless, even if it really doesn't come with a warranty, like I'm seeing on this white truck, it has a three year accessory warranty, AKA the lift, the wheels, the tires, all that comes with, uh, I don't know the extent of the warranty, but it comes with the warranty which depending on what manufacturer you go with is better than some, but I mean, but I think it's safe to say any parts that are on the BBB bill back there, being that I'm dealing with all high-end quality manufacturers, they are going to cover anything that happens on the, that truck. I mean, it's just, you know, stand-up businesses stand up for their parts. Now, one other upside to purchasing at a dealer is you essentially get to finance the entire truck plus lift plus everything and it's already done. And as you guys have known, I've told you in the past, Financing a lift kit, it's, it's not the way to go. I mean, a lift kit is not a necessity. It's not something you have to have right now. I mean, unless you live in some crazy flood zone or whatever. But to me, the best option is always save up the money until you have it, until you're comfortable, and then go buy the lift kit. You don't ever want to drain your bank account on a lift kit. You don't want to finance a lift kit. But if you have the money and a decent down payment and you're already purchasing a truck that you're going to finance, and let's be honest, most people finance their vehicles. It's like houses. I mean, it's just kind of the way it goes. But that being said, if you 
already committed, you're ready to buy a new vehicle, and it just so happens to have a lift kit on top of it, and you're financing the whole thing, that's, that's not really a bad way to go. But just keep in mind, you are going to be charged a premium on that lift kit, possibly because of the warranty, possibly because, well, the dealer's just gonna mark it up like crazy. There's gonna be a little bit of liability in there for selling them a lifted truck, so obviously they wanna just really make sure they're getting their money's worth out of selling you a lifted truck. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. Obviously, you know, your money, you do what you want. But kind of the point of this video, and I kind of already had an idea going into filming this, but without really seeing any of the numbers, it, it's hard to, to really put a dollar factor on it. But you can get a lot more of your money's worth by buying a stock truck and then doing all of these stuff, either yourself, taking it to a different shop, or, uh, or whatever. But I wanted to make this video to give you guys a little more information, that way you can choose whether you want this to kind of sway your decision in one way or the other, or just to prove that what everybody thinks about dealerships is kind of true. But anyways, thank you so much for watching my videos. If you guys have not subscribed to my channel, please click the subscribe button, it's just right down there. Now, so you do not miss out on any future content, don't forget to give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video with your friends if you have anybody that is thoroughly convinced they need to spend the money to buy at a dealer, or you're trying to help convince them it's not a good idea, or you're trying to convince them it is a good idea, uh, make sure you share this video. Also, don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, including a really expensive GM dealer lifted truck you gotta be willing to work for it you guys are the best catch you in the next video i'm out damn uh. yeah uh. yeah